Hey everyone, this is Dana, and today we're out in the Fox Valley at the Gold Daughters Mining Museum. And this museum is full of all kinds of mining artifacts from the early to mid uh, 20th century. Uh, Alaska has a long history of uh, gold mining in this area, especially out in the Fox Valley. These water cannons were used to hose down the hillsides and send the gold into streams where it could be collected up. Uh, we got a winch in front of us now. You can see it's steam powered. There's uh, pipes coming off of this. A lot of this old technology was run off of steam, so they uh, had steam boilers nearby. And here's a steam boiler now. For making steam, for powering all the now, I'm guessing these old boilers probably would have been there. fired off of wood, but there's also a lot of coal in Alaska. Coal they may have been coal thing. fired too. And then that Dad, you heard fly from the drum. And when you're mining gold, one thing you need a lot of is water. So these are actually a water pipes and a little cat oh, unit yeah. here that would have been well, used to drag them out into the tundra. And uh, right what, past this location, there was miles and miles of pipes that used to run from Fairbanks, uh, clear up the Davison ditch to supply the mines with water. And now we've got a long uh, string of buckets. These go on a big dredge cool unit. Dredge and there's a couple hundred feet of them here. They're in excellent shape. And each one of these things weighs hundreds of pounds. Makes and it's you wonder, pure this cast. On that one, just so these are very right heavy. The they red. would have been just digging into the land, uh, eating up the gold uh, bearing earth. What is this? There's a scraper over to our left. But one of the main reasons we came here today is to see the snow freighter. So the La Trudeau land train snow freighter has been parked back here for years. It's obviously been out of service for a long time and it's a little bit of a trail to get back here. You can see Ethie's getting about eaten up by mosquitoes, but it's uh, well worth the journey to come back and see this unique piece of history. The Alaska Freight Company had won a contract to transport construction materials to the distant early warning line and this uh, was a line of radar stations in the far north of Alaska and Canada. So they needed a vehicle capable of crossing frozen tundra, really harsh terrain, and it had to be uh, capable, according to the contract, of operating at negative 68 below. So we're out here to check out this remarkable wow. vehicle, the Latorno V-22 Snow Freighter. In the 1950s, the Alaska Freight Company had this vehicle purpose-built. The Snow Freighter was powered by two Cummings V-12 diesel engines operating at 400 horsepower each. These engines drove 24 electric motors, one for each meal on the locomotive and the trailing cars. And we're getting a really unique look inside the cab of the Snow Freighter. You can see where the operator controls is. And there's even areas for the guys to bunk out and rest on the trip. You can see there's still two beds here. Looks like there was probably another bed support above it. Looks like most of the controls were robbed out of the cab, probably for use on another project. You can see the electronic going up underneath the snow freight right now. You can see it's got a built in winch system in case it gets stuck. And there's also these are electric drive motors. So the uh, the diesels would have been pushing uh, electric generators that would have supplied power directly to the wheel assemblies with the electric motors buried in there. And you can see there's a little junction box. And here's a look, another look at one of the winches up underneath. Okay, let's go take a look at the engine compartment. This is where the uh, twin coming diesels would have been. And on its last trip, they caught fire and left this vehicle stranded. So it was actually towed back to its current place. And so what we can see back here is where the uh, engines were is the remnants of that fire. You can see the little blackening on the wall. And then that looks like an old alternator on the floor. And there's the smokestacks for where the engines would have came out. Only in this area. The snow freighter was used just twice, its first trip in 1955, and its second trip was in the fall of 1956, where unfortunately it was jackknifed near Eagle, Alaska, and the engines caught fire. It ended up having to be pulled back to its current location here next to the Steese Highway in Fox, Alaska. Each of these cars, uh, it measures 40 feet in length and is 16 feet wide, and they could carry 30 tons for a combined payload of 150 tons. And at full length, the snow freighter was a 274 feet long. Feel the 
situation Now her body gets the best of me Oh gosh, she's such a tease Bitten lips, bruised knees I'm addicted to her, need her touching me Cause she got a bad little waist And we tearing down this place Soft the liquor that we chase Got some Migos to the face, baby Okay, let's leave the snow freighter behind now and we'll head back over to the rest of the museum where the mosquitoes aren't so bad. And it looks like we got an old wood stove here and uh, probably a big old bowl gear for uh, one of these gold dredges. There's a bunch of gold dredge buckets sitting around here. So this looks like a take up drum for one of those. And then over next to the, uh, the bathroom wall, here's a piece of well spine. Not sure why, there's no label, but a piece of vertebrae. And there's uh, some more of those uh, buckets off a big gold dredge unit. There's a different size one in the top there too, real small one. Mm -hmm. Well, like that cabin over there looks like any other modern day cabin. Yeah. Around Alaska, but it's from 1920s. 1925. And these, these are some huge gears, probably used for uh, pulling heavy equipment up or down. I'm not sure what exactly they're used for. It'd be nice if they were labeled, but not everything here is. There are some signs on some of the stuff. All right, now we have a bunch of this equipment here, and I'm not son? exactly sure what it is. I believe it's uh, like a sluice box or a trommel to separate out the gold and the dirt. This is a hell of a But if a you know in the comments uh, what this is, let me know, because they've sure got a lot of them here. It's an uh, older design, I'm, and they're not labeled, so I'm not that familiar with the, any of the old gold mining technology. A lot of them look like they might have been steam powered. There's uh, piping to a bunch of the different components. Uh, the one back at the start looked like it might have been electrical power. There was a generator on board. And these are steam pumps. So these pumps would have been used in the springtime to me. thaw the ground to allow them to actually mine. Because in Alaska, a lot of the ground is so frozen that it'll stay frozen That's until July, the, sometimes no August. So if you didn't get some heat in that ground, you wouldn't be uh, mining at all. So there is a lot of these old steam pumps sitting around the museum area. You can see there's so many of them, they're just sitting here overgrown in the weeds. This looks like the old power distribution shack at the site because they were actually doing some gold mining right here on this site. But uh, from Gold Daughters Mining Museum, have a great one. We'll see you next time.